to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. Gonna slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. We are back in the booth at the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. Now, as always, I got to ask, Stony Buds, how we doing? So good, my dog. God, I love hearing that. Now, to my left, we have a Canadian coming down across the borders. We got Mikey Rents in the booth. Mikey, how we doing? Really good, thank you. Very happy to have you sitting here with us. I'm going to do a little brief intro, a little uh, book report, if you will, for those of our listeners who are unfamiliar with who you are. Now, the Whistler Backcountry is the backcountry snubbers, what Hollywood is to actors. It's where you go. So... Mikey is the king of the Whistler backcountry. He's been riding for Burton for 27 years, longer than most team riders on Burton have been alive. He is an X Games Real Snow gold medalist. He's been putting out amazing video parts and has pioneered a lot of the most famous Whistler backcountry jumps and terrain we've seen in videos for the past 20 years. He paved the way for the next generation of crews and raised the standard with UC by dropping heavy tricks and exploring terrain while having a great time and keeping a smile on his face. And now his dope is accomplishment. He's also a dad. How are you liking dad life? <clears throat> it's really awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's a trip for sure, but uh, it's great. Well, I got to just start off with right when you landed, we had to do a mandatory pit stop. Where do we go right off the plane? <clears throat> well, yeah, when I landed in Salt Lake, right away, there's a panda in the airport there, and I got my juices flowing. And then so when I came here to meet you, we had to go hit the other pan, the other closest panda. So you didn't fix. hit the one at the airport? No, nah, because I wasn't sure. I don't know what, what the scenario was, like, and then carrying Panda with, like, a board bag mm. and the duffel bag. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, we hit Panda. We don't have it in Canada. So well, pro tip, the, the airport Panda is not as good as uh, the really? Pandas out in the wild. Just I can't believe they don't have any, people know in, in Canada. I, I didn't know that they were yeah. deprived of Panda Express. Yeah. it's all, I, would, I always like to choose my airports based on their Panda, too, like... Mm. Now I know Salt Lake. You guys has got one. chopsticks, isn't that the spot in the East Coast? Uh, Similar to Panda. I don't Panda? know about that. There's like Manchu Walk okay. and like other kind of fast, fast. I don't want to say fast food. It's good food fast. Good food, but fast. Uh, they're <laughs> they're not uh, they're nowhere near Panda nowhere caliber. Near Panda. Yeah. No. All right, we got to dive right into some hard hitting topics now. One thing that you're known for uh, is wearing leisure wear, uh, specifically sweatpants. Now, I know there is a, a rumors of a stint where you went like an entire season while, while outside of your snowboard gear, you exclusively wore sweatpants. There was not a time like denim or any other type of pants touched your legs, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah, easy. So, <laughs> sure. so where's your love for the, the sweatpants come from? Um, just being comfortable, really. Like just even recently, I wore like, I don't, they weren't jeans, but they weren't in the sweatpant family and... uh just in leg jail all day i hated it and like <laughs> and then before that i couldn't remember like the last time i hadn't worn sweatpants was at a wedding like <laughs> and yeah i don't really wear anything but sweatpants so that, that's impressive annually how many times a year are you aside from snowboard gear are you not wearing sweatpants like how many times a year are you think uh like five maybe <laughs> all summer long that's you're incredible. in some either shorts or sweatpants or yeah and then i i cut the sweatpants oh, into sweatpants sweat shorts. Nice. This is nice. That's real nice. Yeah. So they're they're a member of the sweat family. Yeah. Yeah, like sweat fleece shorts. pants. Yeah, fleece and sweaties and keep it comfy. Love it. Back in it. Well, let's run it back to where you grew up because I know you live in, in uh, Squampton now, Squamish, mm-hmm. but you are originally from uh, Berta, right? Yeah, Canmore, Alberta. I, uh, yeah, I grew up riding there. It was awesome. And then... Uh, Moved to Whistler in 1999, and it was more like, I always wanted to be in Whistler. It's always, like, the goal as a kid, like, I'm going to go to Whistler and ride. And, like, initially, me and my buddies were like, we're going to get a van and live in a Whistler and, in Whistler in the parking lot in a van. But, uh, and yeah, anyway, my mom was down to move to Whistler because they had, like, a good school program that was kind of built around ski racers. So I could, like, basically take the winter off of school. So that's ins- <clears throat> that's kind of how like my parents were talked into it being a good idea was for school, but uh, yeah. So anyway, I moved to Whistler in 1999, and I was there for like 
eight years, I think, seven or eight years, and then moved down to Squamish. Well, you're basically kind of a, this is a shitty term, but a child prodigy kind of, right? You, you got on Burton at a really young age. <laughs> yeah, I started writing for Burton when I was eight, and um, like through the rep in Alberta. And then um, Burton had this like youth, like kids program, and they, it, was, it wasn't even branded as Burton. It was called Backhill. And, uh, and it was just clothing. So it was like me, Sean White, and then like a bunch of other, like, <clears throat> just kind of like, they could have been like a surfer or a skater, and like Sean's sister was doing it too, and we would all just travel around and do photo shoots for Backhill, and then that kind of like brought me up to like the actual company, like being uh, like as <clears throat> being not on a rep level anymore. Well, we have a special surprise. Uh, I believe it's the search for Mountain Jim. Yep. Uh, we have this video part from Mikey when he's 10 years old. We're going to hit play on. Um, and basically, you know, the kid's ripping. The ste is insane. <laughs> uh, serving up McTwist. Big back mitts. Back sevens. Big old mitt. <laughs> Look at that back seven. Wow. With a vest. <laughs> Going kind of misty dog yeah. on that one. Misty miss grab. Uh, little, back yeah. nine. A little revert. A little bail ski on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years old, huh? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So this this is uh, Burton Backhill days, right? Or you <clears> this is pipe? actually uh, this Ooh. is like maybe kind of in the middle of the Burton Backhill. This is actually a right there. I'm like I'm, I'm riding actually a Carabeth Burnside Pro Model board. It was like the the best board that fit me at that time. And then uh, here I'm kind of. Yeah, it's kind of like wishy-washy because I'm actually writing for a, a Alberta clothing company. This dude would sew the clothing himself. It was called Cooch. And then I started writing for West Beach. But I was going to do these, like, Burton Backhill shoots, but I didn't, like, have a contract. And that's kind of how they, like, brought me on to being, like, officially on Burton. They were like, okay, well, he needs to wear these all the time. You were showing up with West Beach and Cooch, and they were like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing at this Burton shoot? Yeah, like I would go do the shoot, and they were cool with it. But then I, when I would go to a contest, I would wear my other stuff. Uh, and then they were like, "Okay, we need to like make this seal official. this up." Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a good segue for a guest question from Dustin Craven. Here we go. Hey, Mikey, it's Dustin. Uh, got a question here for you. I was wondering with uh, how much you love that Sean White quote up at Cyprus, and the amount of time that you've spent with him growing up and stuff. What's your personal favorite story of you and Sean White? <laughs> I got, well, yeah, it's funny because me and Sean, like, we did spend a lot of time together um, as we were kids, and there was always this kind of, like, unspoken rivalry, not necessarily between me and him, but, like, his mom would kind of always get in the middle of things. But, um, I mean, there's so many good Sean scenarios because Sean is, like, Sean is in Sean's world, you know, it's, and that's just the way things roll. Um, but, like, there was a time we were in uh, Revelstoke, and the, the resort in Revelstoke had just opened, and um, they were selling off all these big properties, and Sean had, like, just won X Games, and he was, like, super famous at this time, cover of, like, Men's Health. Like, everywhere we went around in Revelstoke, he had to tuck his hair away, like, just so he could, like, go into a restaurant and stuff. It was pretty crazy. <clears throat> and... um the CEO of the resort took us heli board in one day and it was me, JP Solberg, Sean, Adam Moran, Photog and Aaron Leyland filming. And, uh, we, yeah, just went riding the whole day. It was awesome with the CEO and his daughter. And then like, we get back to the lodge and, uh, they're trying to like sell off these like big, like they're just plots of land right on the hill. And the guy, like, starts into the spiel of, like, yeah, so they're, like, it's a million per per plot, and, like, you can have your own heliport in the backyard, and da-da-da-da. He's, like, he's doing the pitch, you know? Obviously, just to Sean. And then, like, look over, and Sean's just on the couch, like, dead asleep. <laughs> and the CEO, like, kind of realizes that, like, Sean, like, his, his whale is, like, asleep. <laughs> and, like, he kind of looks around, and he's, like, you could tell his wheels are spinning, and he's, like, Oh, like, 
I, there's no need for me to talk anywhere, but like out of respect, he like kept the pitch going to me in Solberg. Like, yeah, you can buy these pieces of land for a mill and da 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 da. We're like, oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I got a bunch. Like, dude, we were at the top of the, um, the chair in uh, Japan once, and this lady comes to us. She's like, oh, can you please sign my jacket? Sean starts signing her jacket, starts going, Sean. Then you can tell he zone, zones out and starts writing white. And then just wrote, like, started with white, but then started Sean again. So he just wrote Sean Juan on the back on her jacket. <laughs> Sean Juan. <Yeah. laughs> That's gold. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> yeah. But then we actually, like, we kind of got into, like, a little bit of a domestic at one point, And then we didn't talk for, about, uh, for a while. And, uh, but it's all good now. You guys got a little uh, scruffle? With a little little tassel <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah nice dude nice yeah. i got a patreon question that uh pertains to your sean white stories first of all yeah. thank you to all the patreon members give a big old air horn here. yes we could not do this without you this one is from malcolm can you tell us a story of the time you beat up sean white <laughs> in a hotel on a burton trip when you two were younger <laughs> <laughs> okay uh <laughs> yeah, I won't say I beat him up because I do have like tons of respect for Sean and and stuff. Uh, but uh, it was actually in a minivan, and we had like just finished skating at Burnside. Actually, we were in the minivan, like we had been on a long trip, like riding in hood, and <clears throat> we were just like really on each other's nerves. And in the back of the van, we like definitely got into it. Um, punches were thrown for sure, but. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say I beat him up because I do have tons of respect for Sean. But you're much larger. Well, you're though, yeah, bigger, yeah. bigger human. Yeah, yeah <laughs> a little more weight to throw around. It would just make yeah. sense that you would win. <laughs> yeah, he's may- pretty wiry. I bet though. He's wiry, like Bruce Lee yeah. style. And I mean, now he's like jacked. So yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to go I mean, in he's minivan in his full with training now. mode yeah, right now. Like, huh? <laughs> wouldn't want a minivan, Sean, right now. But it was just classic uh, travel stress. I imagine it was travel, and like we were young, and I don't know, we just. It happened though. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it can happen to anyone traveling. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah. That's ages. happened with plenty yeah. of the, the homies in the yeah. Yeah. or in the hotel. There's a, the there's a moment, yeah. a moment of stress that pops up. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot a lot of angst, a lot yeah. of teenage angst. Especially yeah. Burton puts the two of you like together all the time, <laughs> like two ripping snowboarders. It's bound to happen. <laughs> yeah, at that point we were traveling a lot together, and uh, yeah, just that's a wild happen. time to be around yeah. Sean. And th- that like the rise of Sean seems like a for sure, and like that's what. I always have to tell people is like <clears throat> Sean's never changed. Like not like fame got to Sean or anything. He's been the same like the whole time. Ever since he was young. Yeah, he's just like does Sean stuff. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. He's a competitive dude and yeah. that's where he got where he what is and Yeah, totally. He goes fucking huge in the half pipe. Yeah, yeah uh, no doubt. Well, let's uh let's pivot. Uh, off of the Senor Blanco and keep it moving because I, I'm curious. I like to call him Sean Juan. Sean Juan. Yeah, we'll call him Sean Juan from here on out. So let's pivot into, at a young age, you started like getting into the Whistler backcountry. And, and who are your mentors? Because it, it's not, it's something you have to access via snowmobile too. Mm-hmm. So so like a little kid on a snowmobile is kind of a, a wild scene. What what age did you start going to the backcountry and who are your mentors? Yeah, I bought my first sled when I was f- 14 or 15 and I'd been doubled out a couple times before, like just to like pretty, pretty close areas, build a little jump kind of thing. Um, but then when I bought my first snowmobile, <clears throat> Martin Gallant was like the dude who, who would take us out all the time. And um, yeah, big, big air horn for the Godfather. And uh, yeah, he would just like teach us all how to sled and how to look for terrain and <clears throat> everything really. So I did like a year or two with him and learned tons. And then um, kind of when I'm after that, like I have to say like another person I learned a ton from was Sheen Campos. Who, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, yeah, big air horn Sheen. He, uh, he was like the self-proclaimed wizard. So oh, self- I, <laughs> self-proclaimed. Yeah. So like, I like I, <laughs> the snow, the snow wizard. So like I learned the majority of my backcountry info from a self-proclaimed godfather and the self-proclaimed <laughs> wizard. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of other people in, in between too, like everybody I would ride with. But uh, those two like definitely taught me a lot. 
you you, braid, you made a really interesting point talking about natural selection versus slope style, and I think age and experience. I think that was really fascinating when we were driving yesterday. Yeah, like how if you look at like Dude Tour, McMorris will be like the oldest dude dropping in. But then you look at natural selection, he's the youngest guy dropping in. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's just interesting. And also kind of shows longevity too, I think, within like backcountry riding where like kind of can take you longer to get into it as well so like maybe that can add to the age but uh <clears throat> yeah just easier on your body and like i think there's just way more options in the backcountry too to like you don't have to like be flipping and spinning all the time into ice and then uh yeah it's just like a lot of room to grow as an older snowboarder in the backcountry well, one thing that we should touch on because you know a lot of people uh, will never experience or have never experienced the Whistler backcountry. And so I, I kind of want you to, to paint a picture of it because, it, you know, the fact that it's above tree line, how vast it is, how big the hill climbs are. It's not something where you're just like, you know, in Utah, you can pull off the side of the road, get a split board, and walk to the top of a mountain and rip some turns. It's not, there's not like a big barrier to entry, but Whistler, you, you kind of have to have a snowmobile. You have to be mm -hmm. proficient at using it. You have to know where to go, avalanche safety, all that. And and I guess it would be cool to kind of, uh, like, I guess, paint a picture of, like, how far you guys go on this explore, exploration missions and what it's like going across the glacier fields and all that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Like, I mean, I think once you start in the Whistler backcountry, like, even just the stuff on the side of the road is, like, kind of mind-blowing. So, like, as a kid, I remember going up the sled trail for the f my first time. I'm like, oh, my God, I built a jump there. I could build a jump there. I could build a jump there. <clears throat> but you're not even, like, there yet, you know? And then you just kind of, like, work your way out to the backcountry or, like, further into the backcountry. And, like, for us doing those long, like, long day missions, like, we didn't start doing those at all. Like, those were kind of, like, after a lot of them just kind of started when in, like, spring riding when you would, you know, you can travel long distances and you're looking for that good snow and we'd find like all these like six spots that were really far and we'd be like oh if the snow was good this would be sick and so then we just started packing more gas and going straight to those like when the when the snow was good so that's kind of what prompted the like exploration but we're really spoiled in in the whistler area because like you can connect so many zones where like revelstoke or out here like you're kind of like you go to one zone and you're kind of stuck there because it's just like its own its own mountain <coughs> where in Whistler you can you can connect like six zones in a row if you want like you could start in Pemberton and end up in Squamish if if you wanted to mm -hmm. like it's pretty uh it's <coughs> pretty it's amazing like the distance you can cover and everything is connected by like glaciers and yeah it's just like a lot of opportunity and a lot of terrain out there how long's the sled day like, what time you getting up and how long you riding your sled to get uh, to the spot? I'd say, like, on a spring day where we're, like, it's, it's like, where we have a lot of sun. Like, maybe we'll start, like, maybe meet at, like, 6, 6.30, and, like, sometimes you're not down to, like, 9. 9 at night? <laughs> yeah, like, they're just long days. And, and then do you back know how out many there kilometers? at 6. How yeah. many, uh, do you have an average, like, estimate on a kilo kilometers, maybe? Uh, I don't – I've never actually – I've never tracked that, but, like, I think you could – I mean – you could get like a hundred and something kilometers to a tank, and like generally we're we're, we're filling up. So two tanks, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah like you got jerry cans hidden, or you just bring them with you? We just bring them with us. Wow. Yeah, I heard a story that there's a guy that works on sleds, and uh, in your area, and your sled always has the most KMs <laughs> on it at the end of the season <laughs> yeah. out of anybody he sees. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I definitely for a while, there's definitely, I, I don't know if I still hold that, but I think like whoever ends up with my <laughs> snowmobile at the end of the year is like, maybe they're not that stoked. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause you sell it each year and get a freshie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know. I, I depend on my snowmobile so much that I, yeah, I always just start with a new one. Cause after the, when you get into the second year with like a lot of kilometers and just a lot of use on it, like. They get a little less unreliable. So everybody knows not to buy this, the old sled off. Kind of. I actually <laughs> ran into this one guy one time. Like, w we were way out there. And uh, and he's like, hey, this is your old sled. And his buddy was like, I, I don't I don't know these guys. And uh, his buddy was like, oh, no wonder it keeps breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah. I was like, damn. I love, uh, Mikey took me out, of, I don't know, 
how many years ago now it was earlier in my backcountry snowboarding uh, learning curve. And I we get out there and we're we're getting like just in the first zone, I think in Brandywine or something. I look up and it's the best step down that would be in the greater three states of Utah or Jackson. Right? Like it's like pristine. And I'm just like, Mikey, why don't we hit this? And I think you said something along the lines like, yeah, I think uh, Martin brought me out here and I hit this when I was like 14 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, noted. Uh, all right, and we'll then, and then Dustin's like, yeah, just put your horse blinders on and don't even look at anything to get to Callahan, which is like <laughs> an hour sled ride. Like, so wow. you're, you're, I don't know if I'm supposed to say zones or if it's secret uh, or it's people fine. don't give a shit. But, yeah. Um, just put your horse Yeah, just don't even on. look at anything. So when you go with these guys, you like load up and you're just like going across, across glacier fields and over valleys and you've been on your sled for like a fucking hour. You're like, are we anywhere close? He's like, uh, a couple more ridges over. And you're like, Jesus. And then <laughs> yeah. you get to the zone and it's insane. And, you know, these names. Names they come up with. Like, the earlier uh, zones have just been hit up and hit up, huh? So mm-hmm. you just got to keep going. <clears throat> yeah, now they get, like, it's pretty busy out there, too. So, like, the farther you go, the less people you're going to run into, yeah. which is nice. And, like, so there's a lot of people out there sledding. Yeah, up. it's crazy. Cruise? Uh, or is there a less, lot of just sledding? Less cruise and, like, more just, like, recreationalists. Like, wow. <clears throat> in Whistler, there's, like, a lot of people that use sleds to just go shredding. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, then just tons of people sledding, too. Wow. Yeah. One thing I think is cool to talk about, too, is, uh, you, you know, what, you got 22 years in the backcountry at this point in Whistler? Um, I guess, yeah, yeah. It, I guess with experience, like, when you go with Mikey, the one thing that is, he's, he's a leader, right? You, you're gonna, he's going to make decisions, we're going to go here, this is safe, this is where we're going to go. And, and I guess this is kind of a shitty question, but do, do you have, like, advice for people getting in the backcountry as far as, like, what especially like as it pertains to snowmobiling and riding your snowboard, like uh, as far as like good safety precautions and whatnot. Yeah. I mean the, the first one would just be like, do your avalanche course for sure. And like, you know, it's not like you just do one and you're good. Like you, they're always like evolving the science and what the professionals know about, about that. So you got to keep updated on that. And then you have to have all your gear to like, you know, you're going to ha- obviously have a transceiver, probe, shovel. We take sat phones. Like, kind of the the backpack gets bigger every year because you just kind of, like, figure out, like, oh, yeah, we do need ropes. We do need a lot of things, like, yeah, just a lot of safety stuff, first aid kits. <clears throat> um, yeah, radios, like, got to have communication with your other crew, like, with the rest of your crew at all times. Um, yeah, so just being prepared, really, I think is the – is that's the first thing you do and then also just time because you can't just think that you're ready and then just like go way out you gotta like baby steps you gotta you gotta work your way into it one thing that i think is important too to talk about is your crew you know and how dependent really if something happens your life is in the people you're with hands Mm -hmm. and talking to dustin you know we were out um in Chatter Creek, uh, whatever, I don't know, it, it zone late season. And, and uh, you got, uh, we were all up and he was riding a line. You rode a line and didn't rip out. And then Dustin dropped in and the whole face slid. And Dustin told me his first reaction was like, as he was in this avalanche, he's like, oh, we're good. I'm with Mikey. Mikey's got me. And like, that's just, <laughs> that's, you know, good to know. Like when you're out with people, if you're out with, if you're the only experienced one, everybody's inexperienced and that happens, that you might not get out alive, you know? <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. It's like you can't, there can't just be one person that really knows what's up. Like, definitely, yeah, you need to, like, know that your crew knows what's up. And, and that's, like, a lot of the time we'll do, like, an early season thing with the whole crew and just do a refresher course on on safety and things like that because, yeah, that's, like, the most important thing at the end of the day is getting back to your truck, like, getting getting home, you know? doesn't really matter like everything like getting shots and going riding and riding powder that's all great but the goal is to get home Mm -hmm. really and like i don't want to make it sound too gnarly because no it is great you know it's the best but you just have to have like all your ducks in a row to Mm -hmm. make sure you can have a great day it is gnarly though so it's good to point that out Uh, another another point too i think is cool with with, uh talking about backcountry stuff is like when you look at uh like teams right the way you came up the way you're able to get in the backcountry was because the older 
guys mentored you, mm-hmm. right? So so you had Martin and stuff like that. And and then you're you're not really like the 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 big way, <laughs> the guy making the calls mm-hmm. early on. And you have to learn that. And so I think it's important for teams, like let's say you want to do a Burton team movie, like the younger guys, like maybe Take, for example, you know, right now you're filming with, like, Mikey uh, Cicerelli and, and stuff like that. He's He can't go out on his own and, like, guide. He has to learn from you. And I think it's mm-hmm. cool how teams, like, in the backcountry, you need a, a veteran to, to teach people where to go. And do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, besides all the safety stuff and, <clears throat> and whatever, it's, like, choosing your zone, too. Like, if there's a big wind event, you know, like, where is going to be protected or, like, yeah, just, like, watching the weather and knowing the right spot to go that's going to match with, like, <clears throat> what's happened this pre- the previous week or, or whatever. So, like, that's something you just learn over time. So, you def- like, you're not going to just figure that out right away. You need to, like, have somebody with you that's going to figure it out and or that knows what's up. Like, that's why I learned a lot from, from Sheen where he was the snow wizard. Like, he always knew where to go to find good snow, like, in any case. And, um... <clears throat> yeah, it's something you like you you just learn over time. And the experience, guys, it's so funny in Whistler. We're, we go out there, video grass crew. We come up from the states. We have no fucking clue what we're <laughs> doing, and we're like all burying our sleds all over the place. We're it's like twelve or one o'clock. We haven't even found a jump yet. And then we you see like Devin and Mikey, and they're already on their way back to the truck. They already logged like ten <laughs> shots. They're probably gonna get like you know, and you're sitting there like. They're leaving already? We haven't even, like, <laughs> guys found anything yet. <laughs> and it's cool to see, like, the veterans really, like, you guys know where to go and where to get shots and how to be efficient. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you learn the light, too. You're yeah. like, you're like, okay, this is going to be sunny. This is going to have sun on it in the morning. So we'll go there, and then you change location. Like, you just kind of, you learn to, like, just navigate and and set up your day properly rather than, like, you're like, oh, this looks sick. And then the shade comes, and you're like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a big part of it mm-hmm. um you kind of already answered this with chris's question but i have another patreon question um and i'm just gonna ask half of it since you answered it for him this is from drew kennedy and uh on a big day in the back country talk us through the routine of prep and packing for your trip which you already answered but another part of his question is what's the most random item in your sled kit Dude, it gets more random all the time. Like, I have a dog leash in my backpack because, like, that's my leash for my pow surfer. That would be random if someone just, like, opened up my bag and they're like, he has a retractable dog leash. In, <laughs> in case uh, any wild dogs run up. Yeah, in, in uh, like, dog leash, hot sauce. Um, hot sauce sounds crucial. Yeah, you got to have the hot sauce. <clears throat> um, what else is in there? Bunch of saws, different types of saws. <laughs> the saws are sick. Um, that would, I'd say the dog leash yeah, probably. Dog leash. Like Throw it makes sense off. to have it, but like if you just open up my bag, you'd be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into a guest question from none other than Ika Backstrom, aka the Eye Man. What's up, bumhole? What's up, Chris? What's up, Stone? What up, Mikey? <laughs> it's Eye Man. Glad you're in the booth. I can't wait to listen to this episode. I have a question for you, Mikey. You always like to fuck with people with your hot sauce leaving on the table. How many meals do you think you've ruined over the years? <laughs> and do you have a favorite story? <laughs> also, you're really heavily into rap music. What's the latest in your truck? All right. Thank you so much, guys. And hope you guys are having a good day. Bye. Yeah, man. <clears throat> um, Those are good questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say that first. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Ika would always trip like the hot sauce collection at my house, but I always have like a couple ones that I call them joke sauces, because you would never like act like volunteer to put them on your food. It just like it's horrible. But um, yeah. So I'll kind of like if we're having dinner or something, I'll line up like some pretty standard stuff, and then I'll throw like a real hot one in the mix and. And see who bites. Because <laughs> hot sauce is so funny, too. Everyone's always like, oh, I'm a hot sauce guy. Like, I can take the heat. And, like, even if you are, these sauces are crazy. But, um, yeah, and then you just watch people go to town on these joke sauces. I actually just got my aunt so good at Christmas. She, yeah, like, complete. Ruined Christmas dinner. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and she was just like walking around the house, like yeah, going crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, definitely ruined a lot of meals. But it's always worth it. It's it's, it's a good joke. I, I, we do it on trips too. We'll bring them on trips and like break out some joke sauces. <laughs> <laughs> and you look over, Mikey's like sweating and like uncomfortable, like like having a hard time like <laughs> breathing. You're like. Yeah, that looks like a good meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll never really get into the joke sauce. It's like just for, or like sometimes do like a little like, like like open it and like leave it there. Like it's in use. <laughs> like you pretend know? that you had some. Yeah. <laughs> but like go for the and other You don't one. even want to touch the bottle on some of those. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're gnarly. Uh, we just like, I got a bunch of sauce for Christmas and my lady's like, she's like, get them out of the house. <laughs> like, we can't wash the dishes with the baby stuff. And like, it's That's crazy. Probably true though. Actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but she's like, yeah, she's pretty adamant about it. But, uh, yeah, definitely ruined a lot of meals with the hot sauce, but yeah, it's worth it. And then part two was, uh, rap music. Oh yeah. Rap music. What's in the truck. What's in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I kind of like. Rap these days, like, actually makes me feel pretty old because I'm like, oh, this new stuff is, like, woof. You don't like the new stuff? Not, I like, I'm like 50-50 on the new stuff. Some of it I really like, and then some of it's just crazy. Like, yeah, I can't even believe it. But, uh, yeah, so, like, I always make my own mixes, and I'll do, it'll be, like, some old, like, G-Unit, some 2 chains, ASAP Ferg, mm. stuff like that. Not that ASAP Ferg's, like, old stuff, but, um. And then, like, new stuff, like Roddy Rich or, I don't know. I kind of listen to everything. But, uh, yeah, it, that's a tough one, it's actually. It's tough to, it, to be thrown on the spot with new stuff because it changes by the month. Yeah, yeah like next totally. month it would be yeah. a totally different answer. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to keep up with. For sure. And, like, so many people now just drop singles and don't drop the whole album. Yeah. So it's, like, it's not like I'm just listening to one full album at a time. But yeah, true. Uh, Rarely. Yeah, so, like. I definitely probably trend a little more to like older rap in as far as like my era, but um, yeah, I'll dabble in some of the new stuff. Dope. What about video part songs? You probably picked a few uh, over the years. Uh not a ton actually, because like I don't know, like rap from like was always like kind of hard to pick. I thought because like sometimes the lyrics don't really match to like backcountry writing <laughs> that well. It's true. And then a lot of rap music is hard to get licensing for. So sometimes, like, I would get, like, Trevor Andrew used to, uh, like, like obviously did music and stuff, but uh, <clears throat> I would get, like, some rap songs from, like, him and his homies and then use his music as well. But uh, other than that, I didn't really pick many songs where, like, I always kind of thought, like, my best parts were when the editor chose the song because he was hyped to edit to it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, like, trusted that route more. Like, because I think, like, a good video part song, like, like my favorite parts were songs that I would never listen to in my truck, but it works with the footage, Good you know? point, yeah. So. What about the yeah. Slim Thug Get Real part? Slim Thug, I did, I did play yeah. that for Joe, and I, like. That was a heater. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, like, I played that for Joe, like. Or he was, like, putting t- together some footage in the middle of the season. And he's like, hey, just give me a rap song. And I, I was like, oh, this Slim Thug album's crazy. And uh, he put that song on, and he was just like, we're using that. He was probably like, I like this. Yeah. We're going to use that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think this could work, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> totally. He's, he was feeling it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. just touched on Trevor Andrews. That's a cool mm-hmm. That's a cool little wormhole to go down because mm-hmm. he, you know what's crazy? He's like, a lot of the younger guys, they're like, oh, he's, a, he's an artist. They, like, mm-hmm. don't know that he was, like, bibs down doing the sickest McTwist bibs of all time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you've been homies with him along the whole the whole way, right? <laughs> yeah, long time. So you grew up snowboarding with him? and then uh, Yeah, I, I met him in, like, 97? Maybe before that. I don't know. Nationals, I remember. Because he's East Coast, and I'm uh, from Alberta. Newfoundland. Uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, and then so I met him then, and then just like a lot of time through like going to super pipe, half pipe camps um, in Whistler or like in Squamish actually, um, and then just like doing contests and stuff, hanging around Trev, and then uh, and then later we filmed a lot together, like f- like we did the season for filming Wear It Well, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we like him and Browner were like kind of like 
older mentors to me and Sean. Like, uh, actually, we did this uh, Burton shoot in Argentina, and me and Sean were the only like kids there. And Trev and Brown are like, they were like fucking with us the whole time. But uh, they like really kind of like took us under their wing. So cool. And it's it's awesome to see how he, he's become like a an A-list celebrity, mm-hmm. but he still loves kicking it with the homies that snowboard. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. Like he was in Squamish all winter last year just shredding. And yeah, he still has his house there and just... Tell him, you should tell a story about his remodel and how you guys got a little uh, piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, he just he just ran out his house in Squamish and he had it all painted up, super dope. Like, <clears throat> I don't even know if he knows this actually, but well, <laughs> 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 we went like cut all his drywall out, and uh, it's like sick, like Gucci Ghost art. Oh, really? Yeah, and I cut it up and I got it tested, no asbestos, so we're clean. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got like three sick, like Trevor pieces. And uh, a couple of our other homies, like, have huge ones from, from his wall. Because he was remodeling it. <laughs> yeah. And we were able to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, and just cut the piece. Probably worth some coin. Cut the piece of shit yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I, do, I have a couple other pieces of his stuff, too. But, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's amazing. He's done such a sick job. Yeah, Gucci ghost. So while we're on the subject you know, going back to Whistler backcountry, it's cool because we haven't had a lot of people sitting in that chair that have like made a career in the Whistler backcountry, which a lot of pros have. So one thing that is wild with Whistler is the weather there. It, it'll just basically be socked in for a lot of the winter. And your entire video part can come down to eight, ten days of sun. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it would be cool for you to explain that process of just being on it when it's good. That's where like it comes it becomes helpful that I'm there all year because I've already looked at all this stuff all winter and I'm like that's going to be good that's going to be good that's going to be good so when it's like go time then we just go straight for that <clears throat> whereas I see that's why like a lot of old stuff gets hit all the time because like people get there and they panic and they're like ah let's just Let's hit the form step down again. Or like, you know, like we're going to perfect jump. And uh, yeah, so I think that's where like I totally get it why people do that. But yeah, it's a it's a real thing where like <clears throat> it cracks for like four days of sun in March. And it like you have to be on it for sure. Like even too, like there used to be the term Miracle March. Like that doesn't really happen <laughs> anymore. Like. There hasn't been, like, a really good march in a long time. But, <clears throat> yeah, you definitely got to, like, that's why you're having so long, such long days because you're riding all day because the snow could be terrible the next day. Mm-hmm. You got to, like. After three it. days of sun and Whistler, your body, you, like, can't move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're long days, especially, too, then the sun's out and, like, you're cooked, like, every which way. And then the other thing that's wild, too, thinking about the fact that you're above tree line. And the way the weather patterns come in is that I remember being with Arrow back in the day and the clouds were coming in and he's like, we got to get the fuck out of here right now. And you're like, what do you mean? He's like, we got to go now. And and you realize quickly, like as you're commuting out, the clouds come in and you're, you have uh, where you can't tell which way is up. What's that called? Uh, your vertigo. Yeah, your vertigo. Mm. And you're just like, you can't tell if you're like on a hill or you're in the flat and it's because there's no tree. There's no point of reference. You're just going across a glacier field and who know, you know, and, and that's yeah. kind of a wild thing with the conditions out there. Yeah, totally. Cause like you're connecting all these zones via glacier. So you could be down and like thinking you're pretty comfortable, but to get out, you still need to go up across this other glacier down some other mountain. Like, yeah, Definitely, like, that's something you learn, too, over time. You're, like, when to just, like, okay, let's get out of here. So if you don't get out, can you get, is it gnarly or what, if you're not leaving quick enough? Hey, yeah, definitely some, like, I don't know of, a, like, a snowboard film crew that's had to spend the night, but, like, it definitely happens where, like, people have to spend the night. That would be harsh. Yeah, for sure. Now, I kind of want to run it back to some of the earlier years um, where I remember seeing my first time seeing you, and I know you've had parts before this, but like promo copy. How old are you in promo copy? 17. Yeah, just yeah. being in a video with the big dogs back then, huh? Yeah, that was a trip because like uh, <clears throat> we, I had done, um, we did like clockwork, which was like kind of my first like whistler part. I was like 14 or 15, something like, anyway. And then like 
when I was 16. I think I, I, can't, I don't even, I think I like filmed with standard that year or something, <clears throat> but they didn't use any of the footy. And then classic. <laughs> I think that was the, yeah, that must've been the year. And then, uh, and then Pascal Gallant and Sean Johnson were starting, um, defective films. And then Pascal, like I, I knew him from like from his brother Martin and stuff, and he called me and and uh, <coughs> asked me to be a part of the of promo copy, which was sick because like they were just coming off of doing video gangs, and they were like, we got Laurie, Eddie, uh, Chris Coulter was doing it, like it was, it was sick lineup. Yeah, I was like, that sounds amazing. Yeah, so that was like that was a trip for sure. Wild to see seventeen-year-olds in the backcountry and learn. <laughs> it's that something you don't see very often. But no. uh, I, I, I got to pivot here because I'm staring at your tattoo of uh, too. of Street King. So <laughs> that's your too. dog. I've been staring so at his dog. <laughs> his dog Street King yeah. is. Uh, let's give him a let's give him a super air horn. Actually. Yeah, yeah, that's the dog's name. Is, yeah, uh, yeah, Street and, King. And he uh, basically, I, I just got to ask. I know he had a problem. He had a little bit of a problem where he was. Uh, Kind of addicted to like humping pillows a little bit. Yeah, he's a humper. How's he? Ah. How's he doing with the pillow humping lately? It's <clears throat> it toned down for a long time, but he's honestly getting some le- like less walks now that the baby's around. Mm. So he's kind of like resorting back to a little bit of humping <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Almost humped their son the other day, which was kind of crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it real quick. <laughs> Jess was like, "Like, is he?" I'm like, "Oh, I don't know what that was." <laughs> Uh, wasn't gonna hump him. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but yeah, he's a beauty. So you got to hide the pillows in the basement. Or? All the pa- all the pillows are like downstairs, <laughs> and there's like there are some pillows upstairs, but like they're not the ones that he's like he like makes love to these things. Like <laughs> really? Oh That's yeah, insane. he like he like licks them, and it's a whole thing. It's a whole process. It's huh? crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he's a boss. Yeah, street king. Yeah, what a dog! Boss. That's a great name. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, he's a good dude. Going, we're going to go back. We're all over the place here. We're going to mm. go back to some Miracle March talk because mm. I think about you and UC. You guys had some fucking great years together. Mm-hmm. And with that being said, I'm going to serve up a UC Oxen and guest question. <laughs> here we go. It's in a wind tunnel, What's I up, think. Momo? UC here, a.k.a. Klaus. Uh, you can ask Mikey about that great nickname. Um, I have a guest question for Mikey. Um, I know he always has the best quotes of different shredders i love to hear your uh top three quotes lines all time impersonated please and then uh maybe you can just remind me of some of the of the good old days you know the the rock and roll days <laughs> anyways i miss you brother love you bomb hall keep up the good work Elvis says what's up <laughs> Who do you think he is? Uh, so in that video he sent, which you'll be able to see if you're watching, if you're listening, he's in Palm Springs, like on a hike with his dog, and it looks like it's about 70 mile an hour winds, I think, out there. <laughs> wow. Might be in the middle of a tornado, potentially. <laughs> he's like, oh, damn it, I got to get this in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so good. <laughs> oh, Yuzi's the best. Uh, yeah, the Klaus. I don't even, like, Klaus was like some, like, He'd always be we- eating like the craziest stuff, and w- one of like these like snacks he would always eat was Klaus. And then so me and Jeremy would always just refer to UC as Klaus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, I can't. I'm I'm fumbling on the quotes. Like the the main one I can think of that we would always mess around with was like. My first year, like, or the year we filmed with Joe Carlino for Get Real, me and Arrow were building Jump, and Carlino would be like, you know what they say? I was like, no, I don't know what they say. Always add another row of blocks. (laughs) I was like, who says that? (laughs) He's like, oh, you know, Jeremy and those guys. (laughs) And then, so, like, we would always just be like, you know what they say. (laughs) Oh, man, but I'm like... Fumbling with the other, like, I don't know. I can't think of the other, like. I know you got a uh, Sean a Sean White one. Yeah, the, uh, the Sean quote. I actually can't even remember it word for word. But, and I don't, like, for people that don't know, like, I always post, I actually got stickers of it made. But uh, it's this, when you go to Cypress Mountain in Vancouver, like, huge, like, as, as big as this wall, <clears throat> they have this 
quote by Sean White. And like whoever decided to print that quote is crazy. Like he obviously like just arrived in Cyprus and they were like, Sean, what do you think of the mountain? He was like, ah, uh, he just won it. But they, and it doesn't make any sense, but they printed it on the wall and it's gold. So I made a sticker of it, but I can't even remember like exactly what it says. He's basically like, yeah, I've never been here before. Looks like a pretty cool spot. It's a wild mountain. <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> um, but, oh man, I'm, yeah, I'm totally spacing on like the uh, exact, the Carlino yeah. one I like because it's like, you know what they say? You should yeah. probably throw another row of blocks. Yeah. Like, you know, they do always say that out there, though. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I remember asking, like, telling Jeremy that, and he was like, we never said that. <laughs> I've heard people say it a lot, but it probably yeah. came from when Joe said it. <laughs> yeah, just, probably, like, <laughs> now yeah. it's just a joke. When in doubt, <laughs> throw up another row. <laughs> and what yeah. else did he He asked about t uh, touching on the, the glory years. Yeah, the, we, one, the juice box. Mm, yeah, the we, rock and roll days. The rock and roll days. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, because Yuzi has the sickest lingo. Because he's like Finnish, lives in California, but his wife is British. So like, <laughs> he'll like every once in a while like throw it like, oh, that's dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. So he has like wicked lingo, and he'll always be like, oh, that was rock and roll. <laughs> but uh, we had like so many good years together. <clears throat> we did like the first year we filmed together. I think he was kind of like. Oh, I'm linking up with Mikey, and then but Ika was like, "Oh, you like, <clears throat> you guys will be good." And uh, we had a wicked year that year. Um, he took me to Tahoe. We like shredded in Abbott's Pass, and we had like good trips in Whistler. And he that was the year he had the the last part that was standing sideways. And then the next year we filmed was thirteen, which was an awesome year. Like <clears throat> he was doing real snow. The, uh, like all early season so we started like super early and just like filmed as much as we could that was when the like the real snow backcountry had to be put in like by like january 15th or something like super early so we just started super early and then like by the time like mid-january hit we were like getting our best shots of the year kind of thing uh and then and then it just kept going all winter we had a really good year that year and then the next year we had another really good year like that was I was doing real snow that year as well. And <clears throat> yeah, we just had like we were definitely like in the groove. And then I, and then yeah, we did four years together. And then one year after that. One thing talking to uh, Leyland, he said he's like, there was a period of four years where Mikey like just didn't fall. Which he was like, that maybe be an exaggeration, but it felt like he'd landed every jump that you hit. And you're in that window, it seemed like. I definitely fell, but like it was more, I think, maybe more, t like, I definitely landed a lot. And it was more, like, I knew what tricks I could do off of certain features. Like, I never was, like, like at a step down, like, I need a back nine. I'm going to try back nine off this. I just knew it wouldn't work or something like that. Like, I just knew how to, like, pick the right trick for the feature. <clears throat> and luckily, it would work out. But, uh, yeah, we definitely had, like, a really good rhythm going on there for a bit. It was kind of funny, too, because after after the the real snow year, <clears throat> that's when we had, like, a different boss at Burton. And he was like, hey, like, the snowboarding you do isn't, like, really attainable. And so we want to, like, kind of, like, get you guys out of Whistler and then, like, ride more, like, mellow stuff kind of thing. And And we were kind of, like... All, all, all right, that sounds like fun. <laughs> sounds nice. But, but then at the end of the year, they're like, where's all the big jumps? And we're like, they're in Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we were, we were like where's all the big bunch jumps? of time in like Switzerland, like northern BC. Where else? We were traveling around. Um, <clears throat> and it was a super fun year, but it was definitely like, like the boss at the time like tried to kind of tone it down. And then at the end of the year, they were like, but where is the It was the same the guy who said it, wanted big stuff. It was a diff different, oh, guy. different guy. Different gotcha. guy. Different guy. Yeah. Another thing that would be cool to point out is UC's program about how he leave his truck. Yeah. At the airport and just fly in when it was good. Well, you should break this down. Oh, yeah. Like his <clears throat> his travel scenario was like so dialed. So he lives in Encinitas, California. And he I just call him be like, it's going to be good tomorrow. Boom. He'd be there. And his truck and snowmobile was always at the airport. And he'd just, like, he'd just be there. 
and then just paid the parking price. Oh yeah, it was to leave it. There. Yeah, yeah. And then like <laughs> thirteen bucks a day. And then like if the snow went bad like a certain day, like his flight was booked before we were in the parking lot, <laughs> and like he'd straight to the airport, go back, do family time, hang at the pool, chilling, and then like. And then he was right back whenever it was good. Actually, a crazy story. I was thinking about yesterday. I was off, I was flying here. I left it at the same like valet that he would leave his truck with. <coughs> we were, it was me, Ejack, Benji, and Ika, and we were like pulling out of Squamish. We were going to the hot springs. And we're pulling out of Squamish onto the highway like north t- to Whistler. And I see UC's truck drive by, and it's like a very noticeable truck. It's got a Thule rack on top, Mizu stickers all over it, California plate. It was UC's truck, you know? And I'm like, UC's in California. And so we're going down. And I call UC. I'm like, you're like, I'm just double checking. I'm like, this is so weird. I'm like, where are you? He's like, I'm at home. I was like, I'll call you back. <clears throat> Flag the truck down. The guy's like, oh, okay, pulls over. I'm like, I go to his window. I'm like, you get this truck at the airport? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, this is my friend's truck. He's like, no, it's not. Like, yes, it is. And anyway, big melee. Like, <clears throat> I was, I, I thought he was crazy, and he thought I was crazy. But long story short, he was going to pick up his daughter's boyfriend's truck, so he didn't know what truck it was. <laughs> and the valet brought around Yusi's <laughs> truck, and just randomly, like, we passed it on the highway. Wild. So he gave him the wrong truck. They gave him the wrong truck. Yeah. And then, like, Yusi ended up like meeting the guy. Oh, I took a photo of this dude because I was like, I was like, you're like, I was, yeah. getting, I was pissed. I, I like, I thought he stole UC's truck. And uh, so I took a photo of him and then UC like put it on the internet later. Like, oh, this is funny. Like told the story of the track. And then this, this girl wrote on his Instagram, that's my dad. <laughs> and then so like, then he, then UC ended up in contact with the dad and the, the guy was like, or UC's like, hey, sorry. Like if my friends were like a little aggressive and uh, the guy was like, yeah, it was kind of crazy, but like all good. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, it was his truck. Yeah. Kind of on the valet Wild. company. Another, oh, yeah. <laughs> another point about ta- talking about the UC thing, he was explaining like just the, how wild it is. Fly home to California, and then you fly to Whistler, and he was like, I was basically a stuntman. Like, you, you, you know, he doesn't snowboard, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden he's just on top of like a 70-foot step down, and he's been like at the ocean the day before. It's like oh, so yeah. wild. Dude, he, <clears throat> he's unreal. Like, there's not, like, his level of talent is like, you know, like a 1% kind of thing. Like one day me, Jeremy, and UC were hitting this jump and me and Jeremy got tricks on it, but UC was like battling a front double, front double 10 on it. And then the clouds came in and he was so like, he was like, he was pissed. So the next morning, like 7 a.m., so the landing is like rock solid at this point, bomb holes all over the place and stuff. The jump is like, super icy he's like i'm getting that first try front double 10 and then we moved on and he threaded <laughs> the needle in the ball hole yeah he knew where to go yeah that's that's another wild thing is being yeah. able to navigate off the takeoff and find the the sliver it's crazy in his, in his part in 13 that's it's his front double 10 that's that one it's like the next morning like that was at like seven in the morning and we were like moved on to the next thing by like seven twenty a.m kind of thing Wild. That's crazy. Let's st- let's stay on thirteen because that was one of your best video parts ever. <clears throat> that was yeah, fucking. Sure. Su- you were you're in the fucking sweet spot. You're <clears throat> you were rolling. Yeah. yeah. Um. And tons and tons of bangers. You have that that giant uh like back ten. For then the, there's the front ten, and then let's talk about that the ender session on the chief. Yeah, that was like one of the sickest sessions, and and that was something that that was a feature that Devin showed me, and like I think Devin. It's a like that thing has never filled in since we hit it that time. And Devin would always like drive to it just to check it out. And then I know like I think the year before maybe Devin and Lonnie Cow hit it. And um and then me and UC went to it, but it's like it's kind of like you have to build all the jump on the rocks. And uh Oof. that's the chief? Yeah, that's chief. And then there's Blotto and the, I think that's Blotto in the middle there. Or where, yeah. Back when he used he's to go fish, to Whistler. He's fish eye yeah, there. yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just had such a good session on that thing. I hit it four times, and I had four tricks, and I think UC hit it four times and got three tricks. You don't get jumps like that in Utah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet spot every that, time. Sweet spot. 
it was, I remember when we were hitting that too, the first, the front three, the first track one, um, like the DC guys were just heading back to Callahan. So it was like Anthony, Torstein, Ika, and they all watched the first one. Man, that's dumb. And yeah, that was just such a fun session. Like, so question: mm-hmm. You went first. You went front three. Yeah. So you're on a you're on a giant step down, and you got to figure out you got to figure out speed. How is the how how was the the state of mind at the top for that? Mm, I like. I would like to think I'm like pretty good at figuring out speed, but I mean sometimes obviously it it goes wrong. But uh, I kind of would rather overshoot than undershoot. Um, so I always just calculate a little bit more. <clears throat> I have this weird thing too, where like, like a lot of people do like speed tests without their goggles on. And I figured like you can, I don't know, like you're never really like, like that's not how you're going to hit the jump. So like, I just get ready. Like I'm like ready to hit it. And then I do my speed tests and, uh, yeah, it worked out. <laughs> that was sweet spot. Just money from the, the first one was actually like a little bit far. It was, and then okay. we toned it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And, like, since I we were kind of spinning both ways on it, like, UC was going switchback seven. I think he did what he did a switchback one and switchback seven, I think, or maybe a cab five. And then, yeah, I did front three, front five, cab five, front seven. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, it was just, like, worked out for sure. That was, like, one of the first, sh- probably the most, like, memorable session I've ever had, I think. Just like everything worked out, and and then and then we moved on after that, and we like, I don't know, it was a day for sure. We we like rode so much that day; it was super sick. We talk about it like uh, on the show a lot. It's kind of beating the dead horse, but the the snowball of confidence, like when you get mm-hmm. rolling, you start mm-hmm. getting a couple clips, and you start landing, mm-hmm. and then you're like, then you kind of just like your confidence is high. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna land on this next thing. Yeah. And that seems like you're kind of like apexing and you're <laughs> yeah. like confidence with UC. You guys are going all winter. You're landing everything and you're like, holy shit. Now I got to yeah. ask, how was the clip high after that? When you land and you get bangers and you're like on, on cloud nine, do you get pretty good clip high? For sure. Definitely. <clears throat> it's kind of like an unmatched feeling. And that's what I kind of hated about double corks too. Cause like, I kind of like, I love double corks, but I kind of hated them at the same time. And there, like, there was a time where you had to do double corks, you know. And it was like, oh, I hate that I have to do this double cork, but the feeling you get after you land it is like unreal. So yeah, it's just like <clears throat> it's its own feeling and its own. It's pretty amazing. What about the clip high from? Uh, did you do? I think it was front ten double on perfect jump, right? Yeah. How was that clip high? How was that? <clears throat> how was that yeah. jump session in general? That was good. I'm trying to think. Uh, that was like early in the season and I actually always like cause perfect jump it's like to people that know, don't know it's a it's a just a it's like a gap jump and people call it perfect jump but it's far from perfect like it has a like pretty harsh compression and I always hated perfect jump like I never would really have a good session on it but UC was like let's go to perfect jump I'm like yeah let's do it so we hit it the year before I think I did like Front nine, cab seven, and UC. I think UC got kind of messed up. I can't really remember at this point. But anyway, or no, he did switch back seven. Then the next, when I did the front double ten, he, <coughs> he got he got kind of messed up. But uh, yeah, we were just, I don't know, we just like put a jacker on it. And I don't even remember if that was my first trick choice on it. But anyway, yeah, it worked out. And then I remember after that, UC was like, dude, it's like, early January and you already got the last shot for your part. And I was like, no, I'll get something better. But (laughs) that was like, that was the last shot of the part. And that one seems insanely high speed. And then you're just shot out of a cannon. Yeah, totally. Like that's because it's such gnarly compression. You can't really do a big setup turn. So like, yeah, you're just straight into that thing really. And then just (laughs) let her go. Beautiful. Um, We've been going for a while. I think it might be time for, you know what, buds? Name that video part. <laughs> Name that video part. Name that video part is presented by Mammoth Mountain. Uh, they support the show. You should support them. They're doing a really cool deal. If you know the the kind of guest, name that video part. They're going to give away four lift tickets if you're the first person to comment on Instagram. 
when this comes out. The way we pick our winner is on Mikey's thumbnail photo, the first comment with the correct answer. And that's how we always uh, pick it on, on Instagram. And if you ride there, be sure to tag at Mammoth Mountain. And let's be honest, sunny park laps in Mammoth. Can't be beat, right? Can't be beat. I, I've had a few good powder days, but I, I live for the, the park ride in there. Mm -hmm. High speed quad. You're freaking getting those reps up. Best parks in the world right there. Props to that crew. Good park crew. If you're thinking about uh, looking for a good little place to go ride, check out Mammoth Mountain. Now, with that being said, Mikey, what's your confidence level? Zero through ten. Seven. Seven. That's pretty pretty solid. The only thing he told me was like he said pre like YouTube parts like he he needed like mm. DVD era. That yeah, was I kind of get lost in like, like there's just fair. so many things that go up on the net now. Like definitely when it was like DVD era VHS, that's when I like watched lots yeah. of stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> multiple times. Same. YouTube era, there's just a lot of content. Totally. Okay, here we go. I gotta crank that seven down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a couple of hints. Let's crank okay. that seven down to a three. Uh, it had something to do with uh, Pascal Gallant, uh, kind of what we were talking about earlier. With your earlier projects, you were in. Was it a promo copy? It was. Yep. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Video he's in, for the record. I saw that movie a lot too. You can say this guy's a friend of yours. Oh, oh it's Arrow. Yes, it it's is. Arrow. Ooh, okay. You got him there. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. No, you got it. <laughs> okay. You got it. You just okay. needed a couple breadcrumbs. Some, yeah, some hints. So we uh, got uh, this oh, is, a box of swag. So we got a box of swag in here. <laughs> nice. Uh, All right. Thank you. Bomb hole goodies. You got Gift a, box. Bomb hole. We got these new bomb hole hoodies that I'm currently wearing. Uh, that Thank you. You can buy on bombhole.com. We got mugs. We got all kinds Big of hot, burgundy cat. hot new items. We got socks. I believe Dude. we got a deal. If you spend over $75, you get a free pair of socks free with your pair purchase. Of socks. Damn, there's a bunch of stuff in yeah. there. Thank you, guys. Also, check out bombhole.com. We've been hosting some like projects on there. We got uh, the Capita video, Paper Tiger. We have... Excellent movie, Yeah, Paper all Tiger. kinds of stuff on there. So there's other stuff than just the podcast. So be sure to check out bombhole.com. And uh, let's get into part two. Uh, with uh, This is the for the four Mammoth Lift tickets and some, some bombhole swag. Swag or swag? Swag. More of a swag. Swag. Okay, here we go. Good song. That's a classic. You probably know that one. I know that one for sure. Say it and we'll beep it out. <laughs> yep, that's correct. A uh, little breadcrumb for this. Uh, big time mammoth rider for that one too. And uh, thank you guys for playing. Name that video part. <laughs> All right, name that video part was a win. Uh, we're going to count that as a win, right? It's a win. It was touchy. Yeah, touchy. I do remember it now, though. Wait, maybe we'll put an asterisk next to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you guys were both nominated for, for writer of uh, Rookie of the Year that year, right? <laughs> yeah, Trans World Rookie of the Year was me and Arrow. Arrow took her home. I would like mm. to see Arrow back on the steel. But, you know, he, although he hasn't probably snowboarded in five years. but He does go snowboarding, like, occasionally. But, uh... And he's like a UC too. Like he could, like not riding, and he'll like, he'll go switch back now and something. Okay, I got a question for you. Out of everybody you've been with, so in the backcountry to to give a little reference, you're going off the jump and landing. Your your percentage is important. Like your mm -hmm. your your time spent, land like it's not a, not everybody walks away with a shot when you hit a backcountry jump. It's 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 not an easy task. Who has the highest landing out average out of anybody you've ever seen in the backcountry? Uh, Mickel, for sure. Mickel? Yeah. Really? Mm. Yeah. What's he batting? What do you, what's his average, do you think? Uh, dude, I, like, I, I'm not, I don't know like necessarily what that term means, but... Uh, his percentage. Like, his percentage. He's, like, in the 90s, for 90s. sure. 90s. Like, <clears throat> incredible. He'd be batting 900 then, I think, is what that would be. So that okay. average. Batting okay. average. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, but, yeah, he's, like, he's unreal. And, like, you can tell as soon as he takes off if he's going to land or not. Like, just, like, the way his body positioning is and stuff. Like, if he's on it on the takeoff, it's all good. 
And another another point is you guys both ride boards in the 170 to era, mm. right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we both ride 170s. I kind of I got that from Mikkel, actually. I was riding like a 62 for a long time, and then I was riding 166. And then I snapped my board in half on a tree one trip, and I didn't have an extra board, so I was riding Mikkel's extra board. And I was like, this is <clears throat> this is sick. I'm gonna. And it kinda, I t- at the same time, too, I switched back to camber. I feel like the camber boards ride a little bit shorter, almost. Like I was riding a Flying V, which is like kind of a hybrid. And... Uh, you're just like a little more centered on the board, and I just felt like it It felt like a smaller board a little bit, so I was like, I'm going to boost it up a little bit. Plus, I'm 6'2", like it doesn't really look like a huge board on me. Mm-hmm. It's a big board. Now, another question I got for you. Uh, last night, we were uh, we were riding Woodward, and uh, the kid was on the steel. He was serving up some fatty frontside lip slide fakies, Ooh, front lip fakes. Right. And uh, I noticed over the course of your career, haven't seen a lot of rail tricks Uh I don't think I've seen any actually. No. And, and uh, <laughs> w- what's going on? What's your relationship with uh, handrails? Relationship. Like, yeah. How would like, you describe your relationship with handrails? Yeah. Like <laughs> there was a there was a time when I tried to ride rails. Like like I never went on a rail trip to like get a like a f- a, a rail shot for my part. But like I thought I could like maybe enter the conversation. <laughs> Just the conversation. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I just, like, would never was never good at them. Like, I could, like, board side a kink rail. That was kind of, like, my highlight. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just was never good. But, like, I was all about it. Like, you know, like, foreign movies, like, I'd always, like, I always had the, like, a little jib in my backyard that I'd try to, like, mess around on and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, I, just, I, I just, like, wasn't good at them. Have you been on any rail trips straight up? Uh, I went on one rail trip, like, with uh, Simone and Laurie, like, for a promo nice. copy. But it was more, like, because I'm from Alberta, so I was kind of like, oh, I'll show you guys some rails around Calgary. Like, that I, I just knew a couple. And um, so I was with them on a rail trip, but I didn't hit any of the rails. Ah. It's like... You, you, you know, like, stood back, let them do their thing. Yeah, like, those dudes are so good at what they do. It's like, I'm not going to board slide this thing yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah those fins they yeah, there's something in the water there with the with the rails mm-hmm. well, calgary has a good scene right now too <clears throat> yeah totally it's sick yeah t- so many sick shredders from there and like yeah putting yeah. out videos and yeah totally okay i'm gonna change gears actually before we change gears on the rails who's your favorite rail rider it's a good question like maybe the stuff i always like loved watching was like justin benny nice <clears throat> and like I guess he didn't, like, he would hit rails, but, like, he would, like, maybe more, like, a street rider, you know? Like, I always loved his, like, nollies and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, going up the stairs and airing off. Like, I don't know. I always love watching his stuff, sick style. Um, These days, like, Jed is unreal, like, just in the middle of his board all the time, like, through Mm -hmm. all that. Um, But there's really, like, it's so impressive. Like, and I get lost watching rail stuff. I'm just like, whoa, what (laughs) what is going on here? But, um... Yeah, off the top of my head, like Jed and... Uh, good answers. Yeah, great yeah. answers. Well, we're going to get into a guest question uh, from one of uh, a Mountain Dew team rider. Mountain Dew is a big supporter of the show, so thank you guys. And this is from Mountain Dew team rider Danny Davis. Also, fellow Burton team rider. Here we go. Who has the best method in snowboarding? Could be 30 years ago, could be today. Go. Uh, yeah, that's easy for me, Jamie Lynn. Because I think, like, forever everybody tried to do the Jamie Lynn method. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, he was my favorite rider growing up. And, <laughs> you're, and you're goofy. Goofy, too. So you and can like, emulate it. Yeah, and there was, like, there was a time where goof- there wasn't, like, a lot of goofy riders. So it was like, just a little fun fact. But um, Jamie Lynn, for sure. Good answer. Favorite goofy-footed rider. We're just getting hard, hard-hitting. Hard-hitting, hard-hitting questions. questions here. I mean, I don't think I have a favorite goofy-footed rider, but, like, Jeremy, Dave Downing. I don't, I don't know. That's a, that's a hard question. Put actually. you on the spot. You're going to think yeah, yeah. when you're flying home tomorrow, I you're going to be like, shit, I should have <laughs> said this person. Totally. I'm like, I'm spacing it for sure. Um, yeah, that's tough. No, that's, I, I feel like you always grab. I always gravitate towards the people that have the same stance as me when you're watching because you can, like, picture it better, but. 
Uh, let's go back into, let's talk about a, a topic that is um, near and dear to both of our hearts, probably none of the listeners, so we're probably going to lose everybody, Let's, but let's talk about snowmobiles. Now, you're, uh, <laughs> you're on the Turby, right? Turbo? Yep. Now, uh, I'm, I'm on a naturally aspirated, I got an 850, um, sell me on the Turbo, what's, what's going on with this thing? It's just, it's just a whole nother animal, <clears throat> it's great. And like I don't, I hate like tinkering and stuff. So last year when they offered it, just like stock off the floor, turbo, pump gas, I was all in. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's pretty unreal what it does. And then yeah, this is my second turbo this year. It's sick. It seems like I my snowmobile goes everywhere it needs to go. It's like I feel like I with a turbo I have to like the things that you could climb is just. You like get up there and have to just like leave your sled up there. Like I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, you're just like uh, <laughs> I know because I was like, oh, we're not gonna have to hike anything anymore. We can tandem everything. Like to <clears throat> for t- tandeming people that don't know, it's like when we double a rider up to the top so that they can snowboard down. And uh, but sometimes the turbo is too much on the tandem. Like like the driver can have control, but the person that's holding on with the board in their hand, it's like, it's too much. <laughs> like, it's like it's ripping your arm out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's hard for sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's aggressive for sure, but it's sick. It's so fun. So it's a must, must have purchase. Okay. Yeah. Add to, okay. add to cart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Add to cart. Yeah. Add to yeah. Add to cart. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it. I can't believe you don't have one, to be honest. Yeah. My sled is kind of just beat to shit right now, and yeah. I love that. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like I ran into trees, the bumpers bent it in. There's and nothing you can do to it. It's, huh? like I, it's like a utility vehicle. Like we at the cabin, we use it to tow sleds around. And it's like, mm-hmm. I like having a sled that's like, oh, it just rolled into a tree. Sweet. No big deal. If I bought a brand new $25,000 turbo, it'd be like, Oh yeah. God, I rolled it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. But I like that's how I am with snowmobiles because I I do get a I do a new one every year. Mm-hmm. And it's like strictly like a work vehicle for me. Like it's strictly to go snowboarding. <clears throat> so I don't really like give a shit about it. <laughs> what what about how's the triple how often are you tripling? Uh are you guys trip? Rarely. Yeah, like if we'll do runs and the road's like really nice to snowmobile up, mm-hmm. we'll do a, an occasional triple. Well, you guys, you you're huge. Like you're you're six two, mm-hmm. and then Mickles, what? Yeah, six he's two. like six two, six three. Those are two big dudes. If yeah. you if you're if you have like smaller human beings, you can triple weight. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that <laughs> for sure. Like like my girlfriend when she's on the sleds, like she's in the middle. It's like there's it's we might as well be doubling. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Uh, let's talk about paving now. Uh, I noticed you you send uh, you kind of paved the road out to. To Callahan a lot of times, Greg. Yeah, we do a lot of paving. paving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's when you track out all the powder. <laughs> and <laughs> I actually originally got that from, from Pascal. He's, he'd be like, ah, oh, man, don't go out there. It's paved. <laughs> 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 and so I was like, I'm taking that. <laughs> so, yeah, we just, we just go pave. We break out the steamrollers and just <laughs> <laughs> plow her down. What about, uh, what about the, the chicken coop? Chicken coop, yeah, that's like a zone where we go snowboarding, and we used to call it the chicken coop because that's where the roosters go to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sick spot for snowmobiling and a great spot for snowboarding too. But yeah, I remember getting. It was like it was kind of an honor to be brought back to the coop. It's kind of an elite. It's like a elite it's zone. a Mikey little golden nugget kind of area. It's funny now, like I hear people like, "Oh, we were back in the coop," but like they don't know, like they, they have no idea why it's yeah. called that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the names are insane. There's also like when you're cruising around, like I don't know who the fuck comes up with the names. Like, dude, there's Project X, and you're like, <laughs> I <laughs> named Project that too. X. <laughs> you yeah. named Project X, yeah, because it was like <laughs> there's like this glacier moraine, <laughs> and it formed like it looks like from afar, it looks like a half pipe, and that's when Sean had the Project X half pipe. <laughs> so we'd be like, oh, we're going back to Project X. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> names are. I can't even think of some of the other ones that are just amazing. <laughs> Let's get into the pub beer crapshoot. Now, pub beer is a big supporter of the show. If you're thinking about hammering uh, one or two beers, get some pub beers. If you're thinking about uh, maybe drinking 19 to 25 beers and uh, blacking out and like urinating in your pants, also pick up some pub beers. Cheap, fun beer. Their motto is cheap, fun beer. Um, how is that thing, Mikey? It's delicious. Delicious? Okay. Let's get into the crapshoot. Here we go. Welcome to the pub beer crap shoot. All right, we gotta find you some dice here. We gotta find the dice. Oh, here we go. 
So you just roll that dice. Okay. Woo! Eleven. Eleven. Okay, this is a this is a good question. It's a quality. Thank you. The guys over at Pub Beer came up with this. So, eleven. If you had to be Siamese twins with one person in, in industry, who would you want to be stuck with? <clears throat> That's like when you're attached to the person. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. physically attached. Uh, part of me is like McMorris, because like. You know, you'd be on the PJ, you're cruising around, you're in all the suites, you're having a good time, but then you're, like, flipping a bunch into ice, so. I don't know, I gotta go with, like, let's go with Dustin. He's riding powder, low-key. Dustin Craven? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> conversation going on, probably. Yeah, drinking some beers, chilling. Solid, that's a solid, solid answer. I think we should, uh, since you brought up Mark... We actually happen to have a uh, buzzer beater guest question from none other than Mark McMorris. <laughs> here we go. Mikey Renz, Mark McMorris here. I hope you are enjoying your bomb hole. I can't wait to have a listen. Um, quick question here. What was your favorite part about the Standing Sideways tour? And did you happen to pee the bed at all during the tour? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. That's another good question. Favorite part of Standing Sideways? I think Standing Sideways is when we did a big Euro trip. Uh, sorry, some of them are kind of like morphing together. Yeah, to 27 which years on Burden. It's got to be tough. Huh? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did a big like Euro stint where we were like, we had this bus and we were doing a different city every night. <clears throat> that was awesome. And like, we would always mess with Solars. He was always the first to pass out. And, uh, yeah, we just mess with solars every night. Um, but I th- I'm thinking of, like, on s- we were in New York, and uh, McMorris passed out, and I drew all over his face. And we had to stop the next morning. And uh, he, he got it all off, whatever. It was all, it was all good. But um, I remember Terry being so mad, like, like who, who, uh, who drew on Mark's face? I was like, I don't know, dude. Someone just came in here and like <laughs> went crazy on him. And he was like, oh, he was so mad. He was actually mad. He was super mad. Like, don't mess with Mark. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then I don't even think I'd peed the bed on that trip, to be honest. On that trip? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like you peed, like, yeah. judging Someone by the question, the it somewhere. seems like you peed the bed. <laughs> I definitely have. <laughs> I definitely have. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, like, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like partying and then it has it has happened for sure now on the subject of partying we got to get into just one of my all-time favorite party stories and that has to do with um a microwave and a boot <laughs> yeah microwave and a boot mm-hmm. out in a boot we're cu- cooking the boot yeah can yeah. you can you just ex- walk us through the, the that that uh situation yeah <laughs> yeah well I don't know how we got to that situation, but I think we were we were all in a hotel room in Whistler, and we were having a great time. Has Pretty sure Dustin was naked or no no shirt on. Yeah, that least. makes sense. He was probably naked. Yep. And there was a bunch of us in there, and it had been like multi days, right? Like mm-hmm. we were like, and Monster <laughs> en- rented the entire hotel. Yeah, it was yeah. only Monster people. Yeah, and we could kind of we could do whatever we wanted, and like each room was joined, so it was just like a huge hotel party. Wow. And we were just cooking a bunch of stuff, and then we ended up throwing a boot in the microwave, and then we all just stood around. Whose boot? I think it was mine. Yeah, like it was like a yeah, it was yeah. like yeah, like a <laughs> not like a snowboard boot. It was yeah, oh, okay. And we just all watched it like circle around the microwave, and we all chanted, "Cook that boot, cook <laughs> I, that boot." I remember it a little more vividly as okay. "Cook that boot, cook that, cook that boot, cook that boot, cook that boot, cook that, cook that boot, cook that boot, cook that boot, cook that, cook that boot." And there's like fucking twenty five people in the kitchen chanting, "Cook that boot" for like four minutes. Watch it spin around. My like he throws the thing back on his foot and like the soul is like <laughs> oh yeah the soul like was kind of disconnected yeah, like, it, was it was cooked it was cooked yeah that yeah that wow. was the time actually <clears throat> to a to bring back a pee story on that same trip i was like <clears throat> i was sleeping in bed and all of a sudden i wake up to my computer like pew, pew, 
pew, pew, like going crazy. I was <laughs> fall asleep, like watching movies and stuff. And uh, and I'm kind of like, whoa. And I and I'm like, my computer's like short circuiting. <laughs> you peed the computer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like first, first I was like, uh, I was like, whoa! Someone just ran in here and like threw water all over me, kind of thing. <laughs> or like threw water all over my computer because it wasn't on me. That's what was tripping me out. And then I was like, kind of like regaining my composure. I'm in the hotel room, like no one's in my room. I'm like thinking about it, and then I had this flashback of just like kneeling up on my bed and peeing all over my computer. <laughs> oh no! You had a flashback. Of yeah, what I was happened. like. Damn it. So that was the most expensive pee ever. You had. actually peed in the computer. Yeah, like all over the keyboard. and it The was old done. computer urinal. Yeah. Slap some respect yeah, and I've urinating on the, on <laughs> the computer. Never heard of anyone doing that. <laughs> no, nah, me neither. I've seen people like urinate in the closet mm-hmm. or maybe in a plant. Yeah, mm-hmm. I peed on a TV once too. Oof. Yeah. Electronics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I didn't ruin the TV. Just wetted it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> just gave it a little soak. The but computer the com- was done. The huh? computer was done. Should have thrown her in a bag of rice. Well, well, it was past that point. I think. Past the point. While we're still, let's let's stay on the subject of uh, of boozing because there's some other some, some other good ones. Um, I li- I like how um, you know when we were in camped out in the RV and chatter, uh, there was some there was some some good boozing going on there. Uh, and at one point, I believe you lost the you lost a flop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lost my flip flop in the river. <laughs> yeah, we brought like a bunch of tarps out. And we made a sweat lodge on the on the side of the river, like just beside our RV. Should explain oh. exactly what that is because that was incredible. Oh uh, yeah, so we like basically made like an A frame with a bunch of wood, and then covered it with tarps, put snow all around it, and then you have a fire outside with a bunch of rocks in it for like a couple hours, and then you shovel the rocks into the middle, and you all gather around and <clears throat> pour water on it, like a makeshift sauna kind of thing, and uh, and then you go into the river cool down back into the sweat and uh yeah i just lost a flop you, mm-hmm. you, you, <laughs> love, you love that i lost the flop <laughs> yeah. we're like, i was filming with my iphone i'm like where's the flop he's like she's a goner he's like kind of like cross-eyed <laughs> 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 she's a goner yeah. it's either you're eating a slice of pizza i think yeah, probably <laughs> yeah that was good Jeez. times another thing to think about too when we were we were out there like it's like the weather was shit for like it's like, should we leave? It's like, no, no, we're staying. Like, yeah, we're everybody <laughs> else left, and we were like, we got food for ten days. We're staying. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was there. Yeah. Just us. Just Going out, there. cloudy every single day. Like you go out anyway. These so guys are cloudy. boozing pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. So we've had the pleasure of filming. We did get real together, which was mm-hmm. cool. That was a fun project. Yeah. Um, and I always love you. You back five form step down, and then you have the quote at the end. Uh, Happiest guy up, Brandywine. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Someone just brought that up again recently. Like, someone said that to me, and I was like, what? And then they had to remind me. It's in the movie, right? Yeah, so okay. it's okay. after it, after your part. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, someone said that to me recently, and I was like, what are you talking about? I've used it before. I'll, like, if I land a really good trick, I'll be like, happiest guy in Utah. That's <laughs> it's a great <laughs> quote. Nice. Uh, it's also a testament to your character, too. So you go out. It's like, like you get shit done, but you have a good time. Um, and then we went on to film Resolution mm-hmm. and Pepper, yep. which were f- super fun projects. Got mm-hmm. to go out with you for those. But one thing that I don't know if a lot of people know, it seems like you were really private about that, but I didn't really know at the time. I know your your girlfriend um, was battling cancer. Mm-hmm. In that, and, yeah, that seemed like a tough time for you. Yeah, I think that was the Resolution. Resolution. Year. Yeah, yeah, Resolution Year. Yeah, sh- and she was doing chemo, like, all the whole winter. So, like... Yeah, doing her chemo appointments and stuff, and which was uh, pretty heavy duty. And then, um, yeah, there was like I remember the one night we went out, and I didn't bring it up till like later in the day. But I was like, ah, like we were in emergency all night until like four in the morning. So, so yeah, it was just like a really, uh, really uh, shitty situation. But uh, it all ended up positive. And yeah, just kind of <clears throat> you're with her yeah. today. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's rad that everything went smooth. Yeah, totally, for sure. Like you know, obviously, there's a lot of like, a lot of that going around. So yeah, more than there used to be. It yeah, seems no like. doubt. So it's like, <clears throat> yeah, crazy situation to go through, and even just as a bystander, mm-hmm. you know, just being there with her for it. But uh, a lot of hard moments. Yeah, super heavy, and then just like, um, you kept it on the down low, though, huh? Well, I do. Like, I don't know. I just like. 
didn't really keep it on the down low. I just wasn't. She, well, it, it was more on her. Like she didn't want. She didn't want to like broadcast it yeah. to a lot of people because she didn't want people the to like. Yeah. And uh, so it was like kind of on the down low, but yeah, we were just like dealing with it, doing your thing on our on our own a little bit. That makes bit. sense. The, the thing from our perspective that was while we were out one day, I don't remember where what zone we were in, but. Like, it, it was later in the day. We had woken up at 6 and went snowmobiling all day, and th- this was, like, in the afternoon. And Mikey just kind of casually was like, we were at the hospital till like, 4-something in the morning last night. Bam. And so, like, it was, you know, th- this is the way I ad- admire about your character is that, you know, y- you probably didn't sleep. You know, you got back. You either slept for an hour or didn't. I don't know the scenario. But you went up. You you were the only reason we were able to go where we were, all, we were dependent on you to go s- get clips because you were our guide. And you went out and you helped us get, sh- I don't know, remember if we got clips or not or whatever we did, but, and you didn't even like express and you just were happy and, and you didn't like that. That's a, a testament to your character. I, I always admired that, how you're you able to handle that and out. not like, mm. com- not, not that it's something to complain about, but you mm. were just like, just your normal self. And it's cool that when people are going through adversity to still be able to, to, you know, have a good time and be themselves. That's cool. Yeah, totally. Thanks. And like, I think a lot of it was, was her whole energy going through it too, where she was like, you know, we were going to deal with it and we're going to get through it. And we don't, we don't need to like have a bunch of pity from people and, or, you know, like she she just really didn't want the attention of of it all. So it was kind of like, we're just going to do it. And then, uh, and hopefully it all goes good and kind of, and then move on. Mm Mm-hmm. And now, then you, now you're a father. Mm-hmm. She, she's a mom. And yep. you guys have your son, Chili. Yeah. And you had to wait two, Chili. Y- two years, yeah. right? I like that. Yeah, two years after all the chemo treatments. Yeah, you can't have kids, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Which, like, for me at the time, I was like, cool, I got two more years to, like, kind of chill. <laughs> <laughs> two more years to do your thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, now we have a son named Chili. Chili. How'd you come up with the name? Na- his name? I don't even remember, to be honest. Like, it just kind of popped up one day, and we didn't know if it was a girl or a guy. And, uh... And we just, like, it, the name Chili just kind of stuck, and we figured you could kind of use it either way. So you are going to use it, girl or boy? Yeah. That's tight. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So how are you liking being a dad? How's the balance of snowboarding and being a dad and everything else? It's awesome for sure. Like, he's got a little board, so, excuse me, we've been taking him out, and it's just like a tiny little board with a little handle he can hold on to. It. How old is he? He's only 11 months. Wow. So we just kind of cruise him around the backyard and stuff. Uh, which is like, and as like corny as it sounds, like I can't wait to teach him how to snowboard, you know, like that's the thing I'm like, so stoked to do <clears throat> just like get him into the experience and show him how fun it is and get him a little baby turbo sled, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right on yeah, yeah, totally. He'll be on the baby turbo. Do they make baby <laughs> turbo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> if they made one, Mikey's copping one. He's yeah. all three years old, just <laughs> <laughs> going up anything. Yeah. And, uh. Yeah, it's awesome for sure. It's definitely <laughs> hectic. Like, it's stressful. And, um, yeah, this year will be interesting for sure because last year he was born February 4th, and I kind of, like, took a month off. Like, I took, like, two weeks off with the lead-up and then two weeks a- off after he was born. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to just keep it local and not do any trips. And, and um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was cool. And then, uh, but this year now he's, like, more mobile and, and uh, things are happening, so it's definitely a. Uh, it'll be interesting once they start getting mobile. That's when they they can get in trouble. Yeah, real right? trouble. that's when they start like yeah bashing themselves Climbing and falling everything. down stuff. Oh yeah, we had to like take our coffee table out of the living room because he's hitting his head on it all the time and stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's a maniac. He like he gets up at six and he goes to bed at seven thirty. Like couple of small naps in between, but he's like full go like all day. Is he goofy or regs? Can't tell yet. Okay. That's what do you do? You got a hunch on a stance or anything? I'm too early to tell. Too early to yeah, tell. Because <laughs> he has the handle, you can't really tell. Huh? Yeah, he switches and it around. And it's slowly like, he, yeah, he doesn't really know what's going yeah. on. So he's like looking one way and then you'll, you'll change direction and he's still looking the other way. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know. No, he has no clue. <clears throat> but Another yeah. year. Also can't tell like if he's ginger yet or if he's going blonde. If oh, he's going yeah. Brown, can't tell. Uh, is that why you went chilly? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but that, like, if he is redhead and, ch- and chilly, it'll be like, whew. 
<laughs> That'd be something. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, is that your nickname? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know it's wild too. If you think about, like, all right, as a as a professional snowboard, I don't know if all the listeners know. Like, you kind of you're on salary, right? You, you get paid to really, you get paid year round for like four months to like show up and. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you got on the schedule today? Like, like for the past like twenty plus years, like, uh, you know, I might, I might, uh, you know, it's kind of open. It's kind of open, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're like uh, I can do whatever the fuck I want, really. Yeah. And now you got a kid since and it's he like was fifteen. Totally, <laughs> totally like one eighty. You're like, okay, I got to budget my time. Maybe yeah, he's got to take a nap. Exactly. Totally. That's like, so true, huh? Yeah. Even today, my buddy was like, "Oh, I'm getting something shipped to, or brought to your house." I'm like. If you can get it done between By like these hours. 10 and 2 or <laughs> after 4, because <laughs> the dog's going to go crazy. It's going to wake up chilly. Yeah. Street <clears throat> King. Yeah, Street King goes nuts. Street King is an OG. What do you call Street King for sure? Just Street? Street, yeah. Street. Yep. It's a tight name. Thanks. I gave it to him. My brother was looking for names for his kid, and I was like, name him Street King. He didn't take it. So first I was like, kid. Yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm using it. <clears throat> Dog came first. Now, I have a question. Um, do you have the photo of you guys uh, surfing with the computer? Yeah. We're going to need to pull. You're going to send that to me because yeah. this is incredible. Uh, l- let's let's talk about the, the work sucks situation. <laughs> yeah. Well, it actually goes back to the pee on the computer story because <laughs> the computer was done. And uh, I actually took it to the Apple store. I was like, hey, can you? I just wanted to see if he could, like, save anything off it. I was like, oh, I was at a party, and someone spilled a bunch of drinks on it. And, like, anyway, he took, he brought it back. He's like, this thing is toast. <clears throat> so it just became, like, the best Instagram prop ever. <laughs> so, like, I had a photo. I'm wake surfing, and I got the computer open like this. <laughs> and, like, and then just always use the caption, work sucks. And we'd have it, like floating down the river with the computer open, in the hot tub, <laughs> on emails. <laughs> and it was awesome. And then Ika was like, bring that thing down to California. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then Ika got like a quick photo like on his surfboard coming in on the wave. And then it was like, like poof, it was gone. <laughs> like, that, thing was, that thing's in the ocean. <laughs> oh, and th- he lost it. It was gone like so quickly. Mm. Yeah, the, a shame. The ocean, yeah. the ocean... Uh, there's probably a photo of some dude like spear fishing. <laughs> yeah. It's all work sucks and he's underwater. Yeah, and like the actual the computer actually I had written on it in marker. It said shove it up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> but the caption was always work sucks. That's awesome. <laughs> also something that you wrote on the bottom of the snowmobile on the skid plate, shove it up your butt. And when you do a wheelie, you can see that you can see it. So only when you do a wheelie, it's it's under the <laughs> yeah. bottom of the sled nice. and you're driving. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, another thing I got to commend you on is your ability to uh, hammer beers and also get things done. <laughs> wow! Thanks. How do you how do you find the balance uh, of uh, party and uh, work? Uh, I don't know if it's work. That's snowboarding and party. Yeah, like I mean, <clears throat> I don't really like. I won't like party before like a big film day or anything like that. But I definitely like to drink beers, and I used to drink whiskey. And that's kind of when, like... That's dangerous. Yeah, and, like, I, don't, I t- tend to stay away from the brown stuff now. So, like, some beers can keep it under control. That's it? And uh, pretty much for me, anyway, like, that's, like, when, like, then the party peeing stories, like, those were whiskey times. Whiskey stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Hanging out with Craven, I imagine you learn to hold some beers down, too. Yeah, he's he's great on the beers. Yeah. Good on the beers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just like to have some beers. But it's kind of like, also with like the whole like Wildcats thing too. Like, it was always like you'd go to a new town and people would be like, "Here's a shot." And like, nah, I'm going filming tomorrow. Or, like, we're going riding tomorrow. <clears throat> don't really want a shot of like Jagermeister right now. Like, oh come on, that's not Wildcats. Like sh- shit like that always. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, I mean. You were an official Wildcat? Yeah, I was kind of like a late addition. Yeah, late, like almost a generation after some of <laughs> Yeah. Them. You got Definitely. a tattoo? Junior, Junior Wildcat? wildcat? Uh, I, uh, well, actually, funny enough, I have a whiskey bottle. <laughs> <laughs> a ja- bottle of Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. Tattooed, and then I have, like, our cruise in there. It was, like, 8 Mile, Wildcats, Boys Will Be Boys on the. I think mm-hmm. he's a little touch-up. Yeah, yeah, it's faded as hell. <laughs> faded. Yeah. <laughs> now, Craven told me a good story about a tattoo you got in Chile. Oh man, I was. You know what? I was actually thinking about that after you asked what my least favorite tattoo is. <laughs> <clears throat> it's this one right here, 
and it was supposed to be a condor. And <laughs> so we were in Chile. Me, me, Dustin Solers, I think. So I'm spacing, but I th- yeah, I think it was me, Dustin Solers, Leyland. And uh, we were drinking Escudo beer the whole time. And like, you know, there's condors all over Chile. And mm-hmm. we thought that the bird on the can of the Escudo was a condor. So we were like, yeah, let's get a, let's get a condor tattoo of the, like the Escudo logo where we were drinking a bunch of beers the trip and stuff. And uh, then we go to get the tattoo and we're getting the tattoo. And then the guy's like, he brought a translator cause he didn't speak English. And the translator's like, yeah, like, like that beer is not even Chilean. Like it's, it's German. <laughs> and he's like, and it's not a, oh, it's not no. a condor. It's illegal. And we were like, <laughs> what (laughs) (laughs) so like yeah it's pretty uh german ish yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) and you're like we're getting a chilean condor on our arm this is sick (laughs) yeah couple canadians (laughs) down there (laughs) dude it got all infected on the flight home too there's all these scars in it yeah but dustin's got it too so (laughs) yeah and you know what he said also it was dustin was getting tattooed first and then you guys discover that, and you're like, fuck it, I'm still getting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we were so hyped, too. Like, we were having a good time. And, we, yeah, we knew that we kind of fucked up. But uh, the dude, like, didn't charge us much money for it. So we were like, this guy's the best. We took him out for dinner after. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's but, killer. Now, go, you got you gotta have something else to add to that? Uh, I was just going to say it was, it was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you named your son after that trip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like the spelling of Chili of his name of my son's name is C H I L I. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are like, "Oh, is it because of the food or the country?" But no, just no. Chili. Chili. Now going back to dad life, I know your back's a little banged up. Uh, had a little bit of a dad moment, huh? Yeah, I was like walking down the the back patio stairs into my into my backyard. It's like fifteen steps. First step. Full Marv from Home Alone, like da, 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 down the whole thing, <laughs> everything out of my hands flying. I'm like, yeah. Welcome yeah. to fatherhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, he, Chili was at the bottom of the stairs. I was like, good thing I wasn't carrying him. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't think about that. But yeah, back's jacked. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, how you feeling? He's like, ah, oh, fell down the stairs. My back's a little banged up. My <laughs> nice dad moment there. Yeah. <laughs> Nailing. Yeah, that's an over 30 <laughs> injury right there for sure. <laughs> All right, well let's hit uh, let's hit a little hot takes. We always hit this one; it's a it's a staple. We like to. I'm going to preface this because we do we do Michael Jordan of snowboarding a lot of times or goat, but I I like to think of it like at, for me for me like the the person that was the Michael Jordan to you as a kid. You know, the person that was or or you know you can you can take it however you want. Not, not statistically the best of all time, or you can answer it how you want. But who's your who's your Michael Jordan? Uh, can I kind of have two? Sure. Okay, because I got like. I think first I'd have to say Terrier just because, like, his, like, persona in snowboarding has always been so huge, and he was, like, kind of mysterious and, like, obviously so talented. And, <clears throat> uh, yeah, just, like, big fan of his. Um, but then also Devin because just, like, everything he did in the Whistler backcountry and I think just his, like, personality and, uh, like, his humbleness and everything is, like, mm-hmm. unmatched. And as far as female snowboarders, who you got? Uh, that's a good question. Maybe like Victoria Jalouse. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, even like watching old footage of Victoria ride lines is like a lot of dudes wouldn't be that confident today riding down some of the same stuff. So I'd say Victoria. Okay, Tuke or Beanie? Uh, well, I like to stay true to the Tuke, but I've caught myself saying Beanie more now just because like some people... You're getting Americanized. Saying. Yeah, no, totally. Your Canadian uh, counterparts are yeah, not going to like that. I know, but uh, yeah, I'm like kind of 50-50 on Tuke and Beanie. Okay, who is the most underrated snowboarder in your opinion? Well, I think like I'm kind of biased because he's my best friend, but <clears throat> Aaron Yamala, I feel like he kind of like didn't really get a lot of shine that he could have gotten. Um, but then like a dude that I don't know would be like, in the ab- absinthe movies, you guys remember that guy Matt Cher? Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He would always get put in the middle of the movie with the worst song, and he'd have like sick footy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, 
Dude, he did. Yeah. He had some wild clips that were ahead of its time. Yeah, like and that sick is a great stuff. answer. Like, Where's yeah. he from? Swiss, maybe. Yeah, Swiss. yeah. I think that's yeah. right. <clears throat> Something somewhere around there. Okay, uh, best snowboarder on a snowmobile. Best snowboarder on a snowmobile that I've been with uh, would have to be Dustin. What about <clears throat> best snowboarder on a snowmobile in America? Oh, you wanted me to say Grenier? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wanted you to say. Yeah. I, I didn't ask. To say something else. <laughs> um, Chris prides himself on his snowmobile. Pick, your, here. pick your answer carefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, like, I think for snowboarders and snowmobiling is different because, like, Mickle put it best where, like, we're watching Mickle learn how to snowmobile was like, he knew that, like, where he wanted to snowboard was, like, way up there, and he was going to do everything he could to get himself mm-hmm. there. So, like, you just, like, a lot of people just make it happen. And you're, like, good at point A to point B, and you can get through some tricky situations and stuff. Whereas, like, just, like, your normal, like, recreationalist snowmobiler, like, they're bobbing and weaving through trees, and they're doing, like, different stuff. Mm. So it's, like, kind of different types of snowmobiling that, like, between, like, a snowboarder that snowmobiles and just your snowmobiler. That makes sense. Um, but, like, <clears throat> I mean, like, even UC was, like, incredible snowmobiler just because he, like, he's been doing it forever. And, yeah, just, like, As long as you can get, get anywhere you need to be, huh? Yeah, exactly. So, like. Because the media only needs to get to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and you like can double them up if you have to yeah, help, exactly, to help like, or whatever. Yeah, totally. Like, you can always get somebody to the spot. Yeah. What about a uh, snowboarder with uh, really baggy clothes? That's a little bit shorter. That looks like he's sitting down, but he's actually standing <laughs> up the entire time he's snowmobiling. <laughs> Always that's on a very old snowmobile. That'd be yeah. Eastone. The answer. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Eastone. Never been I, on a I snowmobile think, newer than two thousand and two. I think. No way. <laughs> actually, except when I borrowed his, he and he nice returned thing. it not in the same condition. Oh, his <laughs> little bit was bent off or yeah. broke. Plastic. <laughs> plastic. Uh, it's too Twenty dollar part. Go, go. Going back to, uh, I think that the best American snowboarder would be Curtis Easting. Oh, oh, that's probably I the totally space that. 100%. Yeah, he's pretty he's good. He's a phenomenal snowboarder. And he's on a turby, too. Yeah, he's, he's turby. He ex- I think it was last year he was like, should I get the turb? I was like, oh, buddy, get the turb. <laughs> and he got it. He yeah. actually told me there's a particular song that gets downloaded automatically onto your phone when you get the, when you get the turbo. <laughs> when you get the turbo. Yeah, you might know it, Stone, since you're up to date on your hip hop, but you know that female rapper Lotto? I song, don't know. The song's called Big Dick Energy. Oh, I heard that song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It automatically downloads, downloads on your phone right and you get a turbo. Phone. Yeah, you buy the turb and you get Big Dick Energy. You hear a little noise on your phone? <laughs> yeah. It's like the U2, it's like the U2 album that auto downloaded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it just That's appears sick. on it. <laughs> uh w- all right, another hot take. Uh worst snowmobiler <laughs> uh snowboarder you've ever been with. There's probably a lot of There's those. so many. Especially when they just get fed to the Wolves of Whistler's setup. Yeah, totally. And like a lot of the time, too, they're like, like Burton will be like, hey, we're shipping out. Yeah, we're sending so and so. And then you're like, and then they have no clue. <laughs> you know, you they don't even know what they're getting into. Just get right? fed to the Wolves. But um, we're going to need a name here. Yeah, we need I some know, names. Like, who is just horrible? Like, media is allowed to get included, probably. Yeah, you can throw some media in there. There's been so many. It's like <laughs> it's I think you could just go through a laundry <laughs> list too. Why not? You know, I'm trying to think of like every like people that I've filmed with. Um, How's Mark on the sled? Mick? Yeah, he's getting better. Okay. Yeah, better. but he, he, like I want I want him to be bad. Yeah, like because he's so good at everything. Else. I know totally. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's just a talent. But uh, like the, f- I think it was the first time we took him out. He was on a rental sled. <clears throat> and like man that thing was like in creeks and like <laughs> all of, and we're like we're all over the internet with like this and, the, and we knew the dude who was renting the sled to him he was like no <clears throat> no my sled um dude one time we did this electric uh, goggles f- photo shoot and the photographer and like the art department dude they like completely sent it off the top of the mountain like totally wrote the whole song like i think it was 11 grand Pay. They wrote it off. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was done. Um, were they doubling? They were doubling, yeah. Oh, they just like hit the throttle. Whoop! Gone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like whiskey throttle scenario? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been so many, it's hard to pick. Do you have to call in the heli to get that out? or they just That one, it? we were 
we were kind of able we were able to get it out oh, okay yeah but it you was can't like, just leave one back there right no i mean some people do but it's bad for the yeah bad yeah. for the world yeah Ooh, lost a sticker down there it's a mountain dew sticker just fell off the wall oh shit so we got any names <laughs> Still waiting for. Names. I'm looking for a. I'm, I'm looking ideally for like a professional snowboarder that's just bad know, at sledding. I'm trying to think. Like I really am trying. To he think really about only it. goes out with like the dogs, though. Well, yeah, we're kind of spoiled. Um, <laughs> they ever send Joe Sexton up there? <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> I've heard. Uh, I think Sexton <laughs> might be a great answer for that. Oh, uh, I, I honestly I can't even think of a name. But sometimes you just feel bad for them too because mm -hmm. they're like they're stuck in four feet of snow and they're like, oh my god, like they just give up until yeah, you come like, help, right? Yeah, like no clue what's going on. Yeah, they're like I'm just trying to go snowboarding. How many sleds have you seen get helied out? Tons, tons. It's common, yeah. common occurrence. Mm, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, all the time. But um, and that's a G yeah. every time, huh? Yeah, at least, at least. Yeah, you can get insurance for it though. Oh, that's sick. It covers it, but. <clears throat> yeah, happens all the time. Okay, last last question and hot takes. If you could go heliboarding with three people, and it's just like good times, and uh, just strictly for good times, who are you going with? We'd have to get UC back because, like, <clears throat> I don't know. We just had such a good good time shredding, and uh, yeah, it would just be sick. He actually came back like two years ago, and we just did laps for a whole day. It was awesome. Um, UC. Let's get Trevor out there, too, just because, like, yeah, he just, like, tons of passion for boarding. He's sick. And uh, let's get, like, Martin Gallant in there. Wow, solid yeah. squad. Yeah. That actually yeah. seems like something that could happen, like, yeah. potentially. <laughs> That'd be a sick <laughs> Good one. crew. Yeah. Killer. Uh, I love it. And uh, while we're, we're moving right along here, I think we should, you know, people love to know. I think we have a Patreon. Yeah. I have a Patreon question. But first of all, I want to say thank you to our Patreon members. You guys rule. Another thing, too, you can find a link to our Patreon at bombhole.com. And uh, if you want to support us, that is awesome. If you don't, that's also great as well. Thank yeah, either way, we appreciate it. Yep. This is from Joel. And he asks, what's your all-time favorite board and why? Yes, um, I'm pretty simple with boards. Like, I always just wrote a board that was in the line. <clears throat> and... um. My board that I'm riding right now is the Custom. And I hadn't ridden the Custom since I was like 15 or something. And uh, that's definitely like my go-to board right now. And um, <clears throat> I ride the 170, which is the biggest one that they have. But, uh, yeah, that's my like, go-to board right now. Is there a why you like that board over the others? Or um, I've kind of like – I was on Flying V for a while, which is like camber and reverse camber. And then – when I switched back over to camber boards, I was riding Mickel's board, and I was like, this is this is a sick board. So, yeah, I just kind of, like, took it up to the 170 with the camber, and it's kind of like I can ride it on the hill and in the backcountry. Like, I never have to – I hate switching bindings to other boards, too. Like, mm -hmm. I just like to just have things ready and, like, it's a go. So, yeah, the custom has been, like, the go-to for sure. What bindings you rocking on there? I'm on the cartels. Those are the OGs. Yeah, huh? those are they've yeah. been around. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they've been Same around with for the a while. custom. That's a setup. That's just yeah, true, tried and true. I know. I was getting kind of made fun of at the start of the year. I put up this thing about how I started riding the custom, and people were like, "Wow, 20 years later, hey, because like, <laughs> <laughs> it's been around forever." We had but, Downing on the show. He said that yeah. was originally going to be his pro model. Yeah, that's right? sick. Yeah, he's definitely like the custom dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what about your board out of the plastic? You like. You touching the edges, you doing the forward <clears throat> lean, or just kind of grab and go? Nothing. Yeah, I just go. I'll change the forward lean a little bit. Like, I'll maybe, like, change it one or two clicks for, like, riding on the hill. But I'm, like, the most, like, out of the box, let's just go. Like, <laughs> I hate nice. tinkering, like, with sleds and everything. Just, like, give me the best one, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Do you know what your stance is? Yeah, I'm, like, tw I actually just made a little small. I'm, like, 24 inches. 24, but yep. you are 6'2", though, so. Yeah, so, like, and I was, like, at, like, 25 and a half, I think. Yeah, I just brought it down in a little bit. You set <laughs> your thing back a little bit? For the yeah, I'm reversed, or, or sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm set back, like, an inch and a half. Nice. Yeah. Money. Uh, another thing that's, like, new to me, I've been making fun of POW surfing forever, because Alex uh, Andrews, I have a cabin <laughs> with him, and he's always like, dude, POW surfing, like, jacked up on it, and I'm like... <laughs> 
fuck power surfing, right? And Just because he's checked and then up I, on it. I like actually we randomly got like a promo one world one and I took it out and I was like, this is fucking awesome. It's fun. And, um, randomly, uh, it's a, it's a great time. What's your, what's your take on uh power surfing? I love power surfing. It's so sick. Cause like originally it was like, I mean, this could be debatable d- depending who you talk to, but like it started with the no board crew in the interior BC. Mm-hmm. They had the pad and they had the little, the rope and like Greg Todd's Cholo Burns. <clears throat> they kind of started that whole movement, and they are like insane. On rest in peace, Greg Todd's. Uh, but um, is that before asthma? Before yeah. asthma, yeah, for sure. And so those guys really like brought up the like the no bindings thing. I actually remember being in a Burton meeting at one point, and Trevor was like, "You should see these guys. They're riding with no bindings. It's the future." Like, and Burton was like, "What are you?" talking about burns like resell <clears throat> bindings you yeah like keep dude boards are sick with bindings <laughs> but um yeah like that's kind of where it started as far as i know I, I think like maybe other people can can say it differently but uh and then it's yeah it's just kind of molded into this whole new like genre really and it's like got its own little like clicks and things like every brand has it like a lot of loyalty with these mm-hmm. different pow surf brands but it's so fun like that's the at the end of the day, like to make a pretty mellow slope, like really fun, break out the pow surfer and you'll have a great time. And then like some, some of the dudes ride like gnarly stuff on, mm-hmm. on the pow surfers. It's super incredible. Yeah. The other thing, when you, when you spend a lot of time in the back country, all right, it's snowed a bunch. The avi conditions are real touchy. Like you don't really want to go anything steep. This like low angles, maybe not going to be that fun on a snowboard. It will be, but, but it's like extremely fun on the passer. Yeah, no doubt. Like we had this one board that, um, Burton made us like a bunch of years ago with like Jeremy and UC and we'd call it the morale booster. Cause like just that, like, you know, we're kind of like having a bad day or whatever. And we just go do some runs on the, on the morale booster. Yeah. <laughs> and like everybody's so hyped and like, it's so fun. Like, you know, you can be like a pro snowboarder. You get on that thing, and like your, your talent level has decreased <laughs> <laughs> rapidly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's so fun. All right, so you've been on Burton for twenty seven years. You aging like a fine wine. Like what? Mm-hmm. What do we got? What do we got next for uh, the big wig, aka Mikey? Uh, yeah, so we're working on a movie right now, and it, it's kind of a two year project, at least for me and Solars. Um, where like. Last year, I was having a kid in the middle of the winter. Obviously, it was a weird winter, too, with COVID and stuff. So, um, yeah, I started filming for it last year. And then we're carrying over carrying over into this winter. And, uh, yeah, we've teamed, like, Danny Davis is kind of spearheading the whole thing. Danny, Solars, Cicerelli. Uh, we got Gigi on board. Uh, Nick Russell. Elena Height. And I think some others. I'm <clears throat> Apologies. I'm forgetting. But, uh. Anyway, that's a that's the squad for the movie, and so it's not a Burton project. It's like not a Burton project. Like Gigi who's producing it? Mix. That's cool. Uh, ex- like uh, Ninja and Blotto. Oh, killer! They're doing Sick. it. Yeah. Wow. Those guys in Airhorn. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like Danny's brainchild, and gets referred to as Danny's movie, but he wants it to be all our movie. And yeah, Danny's got like a good vision. Do like cool premiere tours, some live music and stuff, and yeah, it should be fun. Killer. And he, I know, I think is he going to do some bigger like. Split boarding stuff too, maybe? <clears throat> Probably. Those guys have some other ideas? Yeah, I bet him and Nick will get into like some big adventures, some Nally. explorations and stuff. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully, I really want to get Danny out to, to BC, like, because he's only been to Baldface in BC, like, as far as like backcountry riding. So I feel like if he gets like out on the coast or a little more into it, he's going to be super stoked. And uh, yeah, Mickle's getting back into Canada soon. We'll have the squad back together. And Ninja and Blotto, that's dope. Yeah, totally. It's sick. Yeah, it's sick that Blotto's, cool. Blotto's into it. That's awesome. That'll be a killer crew, man. That's mm-hmm. That'll be fun to watch that video to when that comes out. Keep an eye out for that. And uh, I guess lastly, before we wrap this thing up, uh, we always do thank yous. If you want to throw out any thank yous to anybody. <clears throat> My thank you list could be huge because – a lot of people helped out over the time, all over my career and stuff. But just thank you to like all my sponsors. I've been with majority of my sponsors f- for a really long time. So just thanks to for uh, for the awesome times and uh, my family and friends and everybody that like is supports snowboarding and uh, is just like passionate about snowboarding. I think that's what I like get stoked on the most is like when you meet people that are super stoked on shredding and and like 
fires me up and and uh yeah just thanks to you guys for having me on thank you mikey Stoked and to have you yeah we are hyped to have you and i want to say thank you to our listeners for tuning in each and every week you guys rule and we will see you again next week over and out from the bomb hole <laughs>